Hi, welcome back to this one. So in this particular section, what we will be looking at is function. Functions are used to supercharge queries. And most of the time, functions are sort of used together with the select or with the where clause. At times with the having clause, but we still come back to that. We could also maybe be using them with the group by, but we're still coming back. Now, primarily select is where you find most of the functions. Now the function essentially used to, like I said, supercharge the SQL query because you can use them to achieve a lot. The number of, I mean, there's too many you know, functions that it would be very difficult for us to cover everything. But I would like to state there are two types of functions. That the first one is just like the normal you know, row level function, and then we have get functions. When we get to group by, which will be perhaps one of the you know more next videos, we will be looking at the aggregate functions. But for now, we would look at the row level function. So, like I said, functions are used to supercharge your queries. They supercharge your queries. They allow you to do certain things. That maybe you would have to do quite a lot to be able to do that, to help you achieve certain things with a lot of ease, or perhaps things that you maybe might have been able to achieve uh, using the normal SQL. So one of them is like, for instance, maybe you could say, I would like to say, like, I would like to just say replace. Replace could be one of them, right? You have this ID. See, which is essentially something like this. But if only you are interested in this part, you could use a replace function. And then a replace function is essentially having the DZ column and saying, please strip this part, right? And if you notice, this is what it is saying. Like when you get this replace, you put the subject you want to you know, put into the spotlight, then you see this pattern, don't want this pattern again. Instead of this pattern, replace it with this pattern. So if I don't want this again, I could maybe say it like this. And when I run it, you will see what happens. So this is what happens. You are able to replace this part with empty string. And so what it does is it takes the zip away because the string that is like the replacement is essentially empty. So if we wanted to replace it with an A, for instance, what we will get is an A. So we'll strip this guy off, but then we'll get an A as a replacement. But if we don't want to, we could just do it like this, right? Of course. Another smart way to do this is what we call a substring. A substring is essentially saying, okay, I would like to, you know, like remove, like I would maybe say, okay, I wanted to start, uh, you know, I would like to limit my, um, you know, I would like to capture a certain part of this column. So this is like substring. I will put the column that I'm interested in, you know, substring in, and then I will say that, okay, don't, when you want to start this expression, Start this expression from position what? And this is the number of, you know, sides to the right that you should go. So essentially start this from position four. So this is zero, one, two, three. No, I think it's one, two, three, four. So start from position four and move five times. One, two, four, five. So move five times, right? And then when you run this, what you get, okay, so now it seems like the position is actually position, just a moment, it's actually supposed to be position five. So start from this place and move to the side five times. So we have position five and then run. Right? So we essentially start from this position, right? And then we move to the side five times. So, and you know, the thing about the, the functions is that there are so many functions it will be very difficult to actually go over a single function, but we can you know, still try a few more just to get 
ourselves like, you know, familiar with this topic. Um, you know, like when we look at this, maybe we have a situation where we have in this sample data, right? We have a street. We have a street, we have a street type. We have a street type. And then, okay, we have a street number. This is a number. And then we also have a city and then a state. And then the zip code. And so this basically looks like a full address, of course. But how about writing the full address in one column? We could potentially do a concatenate. Now we could concatenate one or more strings, right? If we can use this concatenate function. So we use concat and we say, okay, put the number, right? And then put the street. So let's, you know, first run this. When we run this, what happens is we get, oh, this is the number. And then this is the street. So it's see Kansas, but it's coming together. Okay. Perhaps what we should do in this case is should, should concat some space in between. And then let's run it. So now automatically we have number street. So it's saying, oh, eight one two three runner, which is okay, there's a space now. So if we wanted to write this full address, we would have to put another space and then we will put the street. And then we will put another space. And then we will put the street type. And then we put another space, but this time around a space with a comma. So it's basically comma in that for city. And then we put the city. And then we put another space, right? And then we put the state. And then we put another space. And then we put the zip. And so now what we need to do is say, hey, you stay here, you stay here. Just to make it a bit more readable, we put each column on, uh, you know, on one line. It's a good trick to make readable code. And then when we see it, we have the number street, street type, and this. And then we have a situation where we have the full address. We can maybe call this address. This is address. Or maybe we could call it the full ad, just to make it even more link. So here we have, look at it now, what we seem to have is, we have the full address, which is taking this number, name of a street. Oh, somehow we have it twice. So it's because we have repeated it. So we can reduce this again. So now we have for each row, we have the number, the street number, you know, the type of street, um, you know, the state or, or the city, and then the state, and then the city. And this is how you concatenate. So we have a list of uh, functions, and you can check out, um, you know, the Snowflake functions uh, doc documentation. Sorry, a lot of functions, and it's supposed to do a lot of you know good work for you to just be able to. It'll do a lot of interesting things. You would see how to do like absolute value, which is if you have a negative number, you would maybe like to convert it to a positive. This is absolute. Uh, maybe you wanted to add months, or maybe you wanted to, you know, you wanted to convert to a decimal, or you wanted to do a lot of things. So, I mean, in your own free, I would maybe suggest that you kind of go over some of these functions. Uh, because they're very important. Of course, when you look at these functions, of course, we could also like use some of the functions at the where clause. We could come and do some, you know, little things at the where clause. And this is how we find a way around the functions. Um, I'm sure we will still use some of the functions as we go in the course, and so we will get more familiar with it. Looking forward for the next one. Thanks.